that the microbes have cleaned out, if you will, done a colonoscopy on soil. Aeration is one of those fertilizers that can absolutely exponentially increase your plant health, your soil health, and just the overall appearance of your lawn, your container plants, and even your raised bed or in-ground garden. So today's video, we're going to look at why aeration is so key to having a happy, healthy garden, a happy, healthy soil, and how you can increase your aeration mechanically, chemically, or just naturally with plants. So let's get into today's video. Question number one is, what is aeration? Well, aeration is simply defined as replacing air for what was soil. And this can happen in two different ways. Way number one is to physically squish the soil in order to make a channel in which air can penetrate that space. Method number two is to physically remove soil from a space, which then obviously allows for airspace because there's no soil there anymore. The ways in which the space that air can infiltrate your soil is decreased comes from compaction and compaction comes naturally via gravity, particularly in the case of potting soils or can come from walking on wet soil, equipment going across soil in general, the storage of heavy things like pots, for example, on top of a raised bed, and of course, natural settling of soil, again, usually in raised beds. Now, with that being said, your soil, if it is compacted, does have some pore space, and we call these micropores, and macropores are you know, larger sized pores. And we want a mix of the two. We don't want all micro and we don't all want macro because a bunch of macro, we can lose fertilizer, we lose organic material, and it doesn't hold much water. Too much micro porosity, on the other hand, is able to contain water that the roots may not be able to access. The threshold for permanent wilting point, if you will, which is essentially a fancy word for the plant's inability to get water from that soil system despite it being there due to the attraction and the pull that your soil has on water and nutrients in that space. And microporosity tends to have a little bit of a stronger magnetic hold to it than a macro pore does. Microporosity also can reduce your drainage. So if you often see pooling water after a rainstorm or after you water with sprinklers, this is a good indication that you have a lot of microporosity and not a lot of macroporosity. So in the case of a perennial bed or a lawn, if there's lots of pooling water all of a sudden that used to not be there, it's probably an indication that your soil has been compacted and you may wanna consider aeration. So why did I refer to oxygen as one of the important fertilizers, if you will, for a plant root? Well, it comes down to actually what oxygen does when it's present. Oxygen is really important in a glucose oxygen reaction that needs to take place in order for active transport of nutrients into the plant can take place. So roots can work on two different methods. One is a passive system, meaning they are just able to absorb some nutrients and other nutrients has to be actively transported into the plant. So think of it as if you were to take a a magnesium, a bath in Epsom salt. Epsom salt, they say, can be absorbed through the skin. Or if you were in the sunlight, you're able to get vitamin D from sun. These are two versions of almost a passive system that takes place as humans. When it comes to other nutrients, we need to eat it, either through our food or a multivitamin. Well, plants, in a sense, have a system that needs to take place. But in rad rather than having teeth to chew these nutrients up, what they have is oxygen. So the oxygen is what helps move nutrients into the plant's roots through an active process. Now, there are several active processes, and I really did bring that down to a base level, so don't judge me too much on that, but I'm trying to make it digestible info, if you will. That's option number one for oxygen, but 
Gas exchange is another really important part of why aeration is so important. Gas exchange simply means the ability to move gases in and out of a soil system. So one gas that we can reference here in this case is CO2. CO2, while it's great for stomata, it is not so great for our plant's roots. CO2 can build up to toxic levels, particularly if you have compost in your soil system, you incorporate peat in your soil system, you've put leaves or other organic materials in your soil system, or in the case of a lawn or a perennial bed, you have root mass that has died off from years previous and therefore can build up in that soil system. Well, over time, this needs to be decomposed and the decomposition process byproduct is CO2. Your compost pile, the reason why it sometimes smells, it's releasing gases. One gas is CO2. Manures, they smell because they're releasing gases as they're composting. And one of those gases is CO2. Your soil does the same thing. And if you can smell it, it's usually an indication of the levels being a little bit too high of the CO2 levels or lack of oxygen. But in other cases, the exchange between oxygen and carbon dioxide cannot take place if your soils are compacted. So that's another reason why you need to look at remedying this. In my soil compaction video, I, I showed how to kind of do a percolation test. This is a good way to look at whether or not your soil can drain and how to determine what depth you're having issues with in regards to aeration and root penetration. What we need to think about if we do a compaction test or a percolation test is we need to decide based on what's growing in that space or what we intend to grow in that space, what level the roots need to go to. So for a lawn, for example, that's not a fescue lawn, it's just Kentucky bluegrass. That may not need as much depth as maybe a taproot on a tomato plant does. So therefore, the level or the depth of aeration that you will need doesn't have to be as much. So what is the solution? Well, the radical method, the uh, garden heretic method, would be to remove the entire top layer. So this would involve rototilling up your soil. And this will temporarily, until you can figure out how to properly take care of a soil, it will remove your compaction. Absolutely it will. And in some cases it is necessary. And I've recommended it on many cases, depending on what scenario that person's in. Within that option, if you are dealing with a pot or a container style garden, you should be doing this every single year. You should be taking the garden heretic method and following this video on potting soil reclamation and reuse and uh, refluffing on a yearly basis. Because remember, we're literally just exchanging soil for air. And it doesn't matter how it happens, if it's pulled out, rototilled in, or just squished into place. Option number two is spike aeration. There's the broad fork, for example. There are pitch forks, for example. There is attachments you can get for mowers, and there are mechanical means in which you can use spikes. You could probably, honestly, make your own medieval torturing device that you could use on your children and your husband or your wife if she enjoys it or your ear lawn for aeration. I mean, there's that too. The purpose here is not to remove soil. The purpose is solely to compact more soil around it to allow for air infiltration. Now that sounds weird, but remember how I said you need macro porosity mixed with micro porosity? Well, you're forcing in macro porosity in a sense, and you're just kind of moving your micro porosity around, which is completely okay. And because you need both. So that works just fine. It's raining again. It's raining again. How? Why? Canada, I thought we were supposed to be in a drought. We're not. I'm currently living in a tropical rainforest that is Canada without the heat. Option number three is core aeration. Now, this is what you played with as a child. If you were on like a soccer team or a baseball team and you didn't really focus on so much as running and playing the game as you did playing with those weird dirt poo things that usually were in your uh, local neighborhood park. Well, that is core aeration. So what happens there 
is you're literally removing soil from that system. And in really extremely compacted spaces where a spike isn't going to do it, a core aerator may be the answer. This is probably the most expensive method. If you chose to buy a core aerator, it's gonna set you back a decent amount of money. You can obviously hire people who can aerate with cores as well. And this method obviously works wonderfully and it's very commonly used in lawns. Now, if you had a raised bed, I mean, spike aeration probably is the better of the two. I wouldn't want to lift a core aerator and I don't think you'd have enough aggregation in your soil to really warrant. If it is warranted, you need to seriously consider option number one, which is starting from scratch and just rototilling the sucker. If you had an in-ground bed as well, you would want to follow literally what I just said, because if your in-ground bed is that, that solid, you've got troubles. In the case of perennial spike aeration, again, is probably way too aggressive. And all you should need in that case is actually just a broad fork and doing kind of like a tiny lift throughout the garden. And you should be okay with just the spike form of aeration. Option number four, and this one I've been asked to do a video on so many times, and that is liquid aeration. Now, there are different products that do different things. One, can cause something called flocculation. And flocculation is simply like the repelling, almost anti-magnet of these soil particles. And this works to a degree, particularly in more of a clay soil scenario, but it's not going to necessarily give you that macro porosity. And if you're having troubles with percolation, and getting the water into the system or getting the nutrients or anything for that matter into the system, your flocculation ingredients are only going to work as far as they can get. So if you're having issues getting them in, I could make a joke about that, but I'm not going to. You need to relax, serenade the soil a little bit prior to using a flocculation product. So. You could hit it with your spike tool that, again, you used to upgrade your lifestyle. Or you could use another liquid, aeration method, which is a liquid that is solely focused on increasing microbiota activity. So this comes in, again, many different shapes and sizes for liquid aeration. But the main premise here is that it is fueling the microbiota in your soil. From there, it is assumed that the microbiota is going to exponentially increase the level of decomposition. Microbes need water, and water is how microbes survive and thrive. If there's no water present, then your microbes will not thrive and survive. This is why I often say potting soils, because of how often they tend to dry out, are usually microbe-wise a little bit lax compared to that of a soil system. If you have a compacted soil, it's very likely you have entire dead spots where water is not infiltrating. And this is particularly true in, say, a grass, a lawn scenario. So one way to get over that is to use a chemical liquid aeration that penetrates all of those microporosity spaces over time, which ultimately moves water in. And the idea here is that once the water is moved in, the microbes can move in. And the microbes, when they move in, they can decompose any organic material that has made its way into potentially a really solid soil aggregate, such as a grass root. And now you have a little tube going through what was a solid aggregate that the microbes have cleaned out, if you will, done a colonoscopy on soil. And now you have air in a space that normally didn't have air. And now you have water and air in a space that didn't have water or air. And now you have even more microbe activity and even more root to activity. And you can see how quickly, well, not quickly, but in the world of 
how old soil is quickly, you can turn around the terrain that is compacted soil. So in theory, aeration from liquids do work. Now, I haven't tried any of these, so I can't say if there's any that I really like um, or if they work even on a qualitative perspective from what I've seen because I've actually never even seen these being used. I've literally just heard about them from you guys telling me that you wanted to try it and want a video on it. So I'm not sure. Some of you may have products that you believe work and you can geek crew, you can pop them down below and let us know what they are. I don't have a lot of lawn to even test this out in. My lawn's now a garden and whatever's not a garden is like clover. So we're, we're living the hippie lifestyle here at my house. If you wanna be able to test how well your aeration methods worked, then you're gonna to wanna to check out this video, whatever side it's on, because that is a video on how to test your soil's compaction. And the video down here, on whatever side it may be, is the video that Google actually thinks you should watch next based on what you've been searching. Creepy, I know, but I'll talk to you guys in the next video. See ya.